it was around this time of year, in 1643, that parliamentarian forces under the command of Sir Thomas Fairfax captured the town of Wakefield during the First English Civil War. Their royalist opponents were caught off guard. Many of them were completely sozzled, having just returned from a great booze-up organised by Dame Mary Bowles, who lived at Heath Hall, just down the road from here. I reckon she was a secret parliamentarian sympathiser. She lured the royalist officers out of town and up the hill to a grand bowling tournament, followed by binge drinking into the small hours, at which point Fairfax launched his well-timed attack. Later that year, Parliament called upon people to distance themselves from frivolous Christmas get-togethers, and that was just the beginning. The Archbishop of Canterbury was executed for treason, and then the King himself was done away with, amid fears that he wanted to reassert papal authority throughout the kingdom. By the middle of the 17th century, our parish churches had been changed beyond belief. Forever, it seemed. Statues were shattered, and windows got smashed. Traditional forms of worship went underground, into the secrecy of private houses. Those who clung to old familiar ways risked imprisonment or exile. Now, the Reverend Henry Vaughan was a Welsh cleric who lived through these turbulent times. He was a gifted poet with a talent for expressing the sense of bewilderment felt by so many within the Church of England. Their situation was indeed unprecedented. How could there ever be any return to normality? I want to read you a short poem in which Henry reflects on the increasing number of his friends who have recently died. Many, no doubt, in the course of the civil wars. He pictures them bathed in heavenly light, in contrast to the gloom he experiences thanks to his earthbound limitations. The poem reflects an acute sense of personal loss and public isolation. This is both a challenge and an opportunity for the family of God, the Church. The poet cries out for clearer understanding of what lies beyond the final frontiers of our earthly life. Seeking an exit from lockdown, as we might say, they are all gone into the world of light, and I alone sit lingering here. Their very memory is fair and bright, and my sad thoughts doth clear. I see them walking in an air of glory, whose light doth trample on my days. My days, which are at best both dull and hoary, mere glimmerings and decays. And yet, as angels in some brighter dreams call to the soul when man doth sleep, so some strange thoughts transcend our wonted themes and into glory peep. O Father of eternal light, and all created glories under thee, resume thy spirit from this world of thrall into true liberty. Either disperse these mists which blot and fill my perspective still as they pass, or else remove me hence unto that hill where I shall need no glass. <laughs>